I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let us pray. Abinu Malkenu, our Father, our King. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made. Dear Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory for all that you've done in the past, all that you do in the present, and all that you said you would do in the future. Lord, I ask you to increase as I decrease. Let the words and the meditation, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my Redeemer. I ask this all in the precious name of your Son, Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. And let the church say, Amen. 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 Well, we have a um, take home lunch that we'll put out right before we're ready to go. And uh, happy second church anniversary. Amen. Gratefully blessed. Amen. Besides my own anniversary, you know, I, I can't think of any other anniversary. I like to celebrate. Amen. The 2021 theme is still God is in control, mm -hmm. and of course, July is eternity awaits. But we have a sermon this Sunday. Holy Spirit gave me this word. And the title is, of it is, Don't Let Your House Go Down. Uh -oh. Amen. I like that. Yeah. I do too. Don't let yeah. your house blow down. Can you say that with me? Don't oh, let gosh. your house blow oh, down. Amen. And the scripture passage is found in the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, the 47th through the 49th verse. And if you can, would you please stand as we go to Luke, the sixth chapter, the 47th through the 49th verse. And the sermon title is Don't Let Your House Blow Down. And it reads, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the stream broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Baruch Hashem Adonai, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, God's beloved. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, we're, we're speaking about eternity awaits, and God and eternity are important concepts in theology. Eternity can be biblically defined as a continual span of time that never ends. Eternity is forever. There are a few ways of saying forever in the original Hebrew language, which include le'olam, olam, la nessa, nessa. A common phrase in the Hebrew language is Laolam Vayed, and it's usually translated as forever and ever. And in Hebrew, it means to the distant horizon and or a very distant time and even further. Now, the Greek word Ionios is most commonly translated as eternity, life or lifetime. So we're speaking today about eternity awaiting us and what we must do now to prepare for the eternity that we will receive. Uh, will you walk with me this glorious afternoon in the Lord? Amen? Amen. Now the message today is entitled, Don't Let Your House Blow Down. And it was so on point by the Holy Spirit. For we're talking about our spiritual houses and these temples of God, His church, and how we choose to take care of and build them now. We can choose to spend eternity with God or be separated from God because eternity awaits us. Amen. And to begin this message, we want to go back to our childhood days. 
you're ready to go back to the childhood days. <laughs> oh, okay, now, Raquel, Cheyenne, this for you, our childhood days, the ones you're in right now. Can someone here remember a time when you were told a nursery tale story, maybe at bedtime or kindergarten years? Does anyone remember the story of the three little pigs? No. Oh, yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Hands oh, yeah. raised. If you remember the three remember little pigs. pigs. Yes, the three little pigs. We're talking about don't let your house blow down. Amen. The tale of the three little pigs and the big bad wolf was first introduced to children in English-speaking countries in 1898 by a man named Joseph Jacobs. Now, as we're speaking about the three little pigs, remember the theme of eternity awaits and the message of don't let your house blow down. Amen? Amen? Holy Spirit, please take control. The brief story of the three little pigs is that once upon a time, there were three little pigs, and the time came for them to leave home and to seek their fortunes. Now, before they left home, their mother told them, whatever you do, do it the best that you can, because that's the way to get along in the world. Mm -hmm. I've got to pause here for just a minute and ask if anybody here was ever told that same advice. And a godly parent might have said, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God because that's the way to get along in this world. Amen. Amen. Well, now back to the three little pigs. So the first little pig built his house out of straw because it did not take any effort and was easy and quick to do. And the second little pig built his house out of sticks because it was stronger than straw and it only took moderate effort on his part. So let's speak about the first and the second little pig for a minute. They both built houses, right? They both chose to build houses that required little or no effort but they both were lazy and, and wanted to play all day. However, they did not anticipate the big bad wolf. They did not expect their houses to blow down. Are you with me? Amen. Oh, but the third little pig, the third little pig, he built his house out of bricks because he wanted a strong house and foundation. He worked all day and built a sturdy house complete with a fine fireplace and chimney. It looked like it could withstand the strongest winds. Beloved, the third little pig was willing to do the work, be prepared for any situation, and he chose to not let his house go down. Remember what our scripture passage said to us as believers. Everyone who comes to Jesus, hears his words and does them, is building a spiritually firm foundation on Jesus Christ, Amen. the rock of our salvation. Amen. When we sow to the Spirit, we make spiritual investments by depositing the word of God, the good seed, into our hearts as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all those whom would listen and receive. So the analogy here is that only the third little pig built his house spiritually sound. So the story goes on to describe what happened to each little pig in their house mm -hmm. and when, when the big bad wolf came along. Now, we all know that there had to be a big bad wolf in this nursery tale, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? You Amen. see, the big bad wolf was just waiting for a weak little pig house to destroy it. Because that's what he does. And he does his job well. The big bad wolf is a big bad wolf. <laughs> Amen? So, so let's, make it, let's make it personal now. A believer, a child of the Most High, will have big bad wolves attack them daily. Amen. All right? Are you with me? And they come in all ways, shapes, and forms. The big bad wolf may be disguised, uh-oh, here we go now, as family, 
friends, yeah. enemies, situations, oh, health, depression, yeah. finances, one's flesh, and yeah. Hasatan, the devil himself. Amen. The difference is that we are already victorious for when we have built a firm spiritual foundation on Jesus Christ, then the gates of hell shall not prevail. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. So the next day, the wolf, all right, you with me now? The wolf happened to pass by the lane where the three little pigs lived. And he saw the straw house and he smelled the pig inside. He was envisioning a mouth-watering tasty meal. <laughs> the wolf knocked on the door and said, little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. But the little pig saw the wolf's big paws through the keyhole. So he answered back, no, 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 not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Then the wolf showed his teeth. You know, people show their teeth. When they, when they say who they are, yeah. let's believe them. The yeah. wolf showed his teeth and said, then I'll huff and I'll puff. Girls, you know the story. Yeah. And I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and puffed and blew the house down. Now the wolf opened his jaws to eat the little pig, but he was quick. He was a goatee. <laughs> he escaped and ran to hide with the second little pig. Oh, yeah. Now the wolf, he continued to the next house. Made of sticks, he smelled two pigs inside and thought about dinner. Again, he knocked and said, you know what he said, little pigs, little pigs. What'd he say? Let me in, let me in. And they answered, no, no, no. Not by the hairs on our chinny chin chin. So the wolf showed his teeth. He huffed and puffed and blew the house down. And he tried to catch them both, but his greed would not let him. And they escaped to their brother's house made of bricks. So what happened next? The wolf knocked. He went to the third house. The wolf knocked and said, little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. And they replied, no, 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 not by the hairs on our chinny chin chin. The wolf says, then I'll huff and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. So the wolf tried to blow the house down. And he tried to blow the house down. And he tried to blow the house down, but to no avail. He became enraged and made a plan to come down the chimney and eat the three little pigs. You see, the big bad wolf, he knew what he came to do. And he had no fear of the little pigs. Oh, but he underestimated the third little pig. You know, when we trust God for all things in our lives, then no weapon formed against Amen. us shall prosper. Amen. You know, people, they underestimate true saints of God. Yes. And oh, this third little pig, smart third little pig. He had discernment. While the wolf was coming down the chimney, this little pig had made a blazing fire with a big pot of boiling water on the fire. So you see, just as the wolf came down, the little pig pulled off the lid and plop, fell the wolf into the boiling water. So the little pig put back on the cover and he made a fine wolf stew for dinner. <laughs> You see, beloved, and they all lived happily ever after. All right? Amen? Amen. They chose their eternity. Okay. Beloved, little pigs one and two failed to plan. And because of this, they planned to fail. 
They did not consider every possibility of what could happen. We all see how little pig number three built his house on a firm foundation and defeated the wolf because he built well. You know, friends of mine, the big bad wolf felt that he had no limits and he was invincible. His bravado and ego were boosted by his early successes and dinners of the first and second little pig that he thought he would have in his mind. The lesson for all is that hard work pays off and a firm spiritual foundation on earth is essential for eternity awaits us. And the third little pig, you know, he could have turned his brothers away. He could have said, that's not my bad. You know, you, you, didn't, you didn't build your house right. You know, go, go ahead, wolf, have at him. Yet he let them come in for se uh, shelter and safety. And, you know, if, if little pig number three had been a human being, then we might have said that this person showed the compassion of God towards his fellow brother. Amen? Amen. Shortcuts can cost one their life. But spiritual faithfulness unto the Lord results in his spiritual blessings for us. If one fails to plan, then they plan to fail. Knowing that God is in control of our lives and he alone is our ever-present help in the time of trouble, we must spiritually work now on earth to receive our heavenly rewards to come. We are speaking about a spiritual house, a special house, a house in which the Holy Spirit dwells. We must build our spiritual house into a home, a sheltered place where the fruit of God's Spirit dwells. God's spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A spiritual house built on a firm foundation is capable of withstanding anyone and anything that comes against it. Believe me, I know. For God is in the center of it and has covered it with the precious blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus reminds everyone that he alone is the solid foundation. His Father has given us the free will to know, accept, and trust his Son to be our Lord and Savior. Life is unpredictable, and the daily stresses and challenges can wear us down. Is there a witness here today? What is powerless? We are powerless without faith in God. When we as disciples turn to the wisdom found in the scriptures, we are doing one of the best things that we can do to achieve a state of resolve. You know, God has given us the blueprints and the permits to build spiritual houses for his glory. Mm -hmm. This is for his glory. Amen. Honor and praise. And those who choose to disobey his word will not be living the full and enriched life that God has planned for them to live. You know, what do the scriptures say to us about building a spiritual house on a firm foundation? Well, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 14 reads, For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on a foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. Hebrews 3 and 4 reads, For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Psalm 127 and 1 reads, Unless the Lord builds the house. Mm. Those who build it labor in vain. Right. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, God has to be our highest priority for us when we worship him in spirit and truth. When we seek him daily, when we see him work miracles in, through, and around our lives. Just as a physical house may have surround sound, our spiritual houses should have surround God. Amen. 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 Surround God. Mm -hmm. Our faith is proven daily, for there will be always something or someone. We were talking about that, Andre. That tries to disrupt your spiritual house, crack your spiritual foundation, mm -hmm. or as some might say, burst your bubble. Mm -hmm. When the enemy tries to huff and puff and blow your house down, 
Remember as the Lord told Joshua in 1 and 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And 2 Chronicles 15 and 7 said, But you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Amen. And Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. Better is the end of a thing that is beginning. Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit, my God. And Romans 12 and 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So therefore, saints, the question we must ask ourselves today is, how do we not let our spiritual houses blow down? And first, we must examine our house to see who and what it is built on. Is it built on a firm foundation, which is Jesus, the solid rock? Does Abba Father smell a sweet and pleasing aroma flowing from our spiritual house because we love, serve, remain faithful and obedient to his will? Are we praying without ceasing, reading God's holy word, keeping our minds and hearts focused on the Lord, following the path he has set for us, being doers of his word, believing and trusting his promises for us? You know, there is an old gospel song entitled, my hope is built on nothing less. And the song begins, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil beloved this here is the foundational part that we need on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand let me say that again on Christ. Someone say, on Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So in conclusion to this message entitled, Don't Let Your House Blow Down. We as disciples in God's church have an eternal choice to make Today, today, for eternity awaits us. Don't let our spiritual houses blow down. When we're faced with unbearable circumstances, feeling lost or alone, don't let our spiritual houses blow down. See yourself as God sees you. And don't let your house blow down. Be prepared for the blessings that God has for you and me. Remember that God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So don't let your house blow down. Don't let your house blow down. On Monday, don't let it blow down. On Tuesday, don't let it blow down. On Wednesday, don't let it blow down. On Thursday, don't let it blow down. You know Friday's coming. Don't let it blow down. Shabbat's coming on Saturday. Don't let it blow down. Sunday is Sunday. And don't let it blow down. Church, don't let our house blow down. Some people want to say, well, you know, in five years you'll know if a church will, will be standing. Well, I've got news for those people who say that. In five years, God said, it's already standing, Amen. okay? Amen. He's not going to let his house Amen. blow down, Amen. and we cannot let his house That's blow right. down, and we right. cannot let our spiritual houses That's blow right. down. Amen. So I pray that this message has been 
beneficial. Amen. I don't think we can ever look at the story of the three little pigs the same way again. Amen. Amen. God bless you on this second anniversary. And let's give the Lord a big hand.